Uh, it was probably like three years ago. Me and my friends uh, picked up some beer and we uh, didn't have enough for both of us to get drunk, so we took some Xanax along with it. I was at my dad's house and I went in the cabinet, found some pills, so I just took a whole bunch of them, liked them, so I kept buying them at school and doing them there. I think I was in the seventh grade and a friend of mine was prescribed Adderall and uh, one day I just asked him if I could get it and he brought it to me. I didn't think he actually would, but I just started using it. I stuck with the same little group of friends and we all used drugs together. Um, I was, when I was using drugs, I was very depressed at the time. I wasn't prescribed any medication myself, but the drugs made it easier to deal with that. The first time I did it, I only took three and I only got a little bit of a buzz, but then I kept increasing it. And like the last time I did it, I took 13 Oxycontin. I don't really know. Um, I guess I just heard a lot of things about like how it can get you really high and like messed up and um, it was like the first drug I ever did, so. I lost a lot of trust with like everybody, all my doctors, because I tried to scam them out of drugs. And uh, my parents, I was stealing my dad's pills because he's on who knows what. And I was abusing my uh, sleep medication. And... Like people would steal from their parents' cabinet and sell it to other people. And then most people at Hopkins School I went to would get it through like gangs and stuff there, which is how I got it. I don't know, I just kept making excuses about like how sick it made me. I just said that like I took too much for my first time and like things like that and uh I don't know, I just knew that if I kept doing it I would like it would get me high, like I would get messed up. It's a way to escape. Just like any other drug. It's just prescribed to people. Some people think it's more safe, but it's really not. The number of teens abusing prescription drugs has tripled since 1992. The appeal seems clear. They can be legally obtained. Less street pusher stigma and costs are cheap. There are estimated to be 800,000 websites that sell prescription drugs and will ship them to households directly. About one third of all U.S. drug abuse is prescription drug abuse. The prescription drugs that are commonly used are in three main drug categories. Opioids such as Oxycontin, Vicodin, and Demerol help to alleviate pain. There are central nervous system depressants like Valium and Xanax, and also stimulants such as Ritalin and Adderall. Between 1985 and 2000, the number of teens and young adults ages 12 through 25 abusing prescription painkillers such as Oxycontin or Vicodin has grown from 400,000 to 2 million. In 2005, 2.1 million teens abused prescription drugs. According to the 2006 National Survey on Drug Abuse and Health Data, approximately 8.8% of adolescents aged 12 through 17 years use prescription drugs for non-medical purposes. What the government figures show is that many more teens are not not going to the local dealer anymore, they're just going to the medicine cabinet and helping themselves. Or if you get involved in teen screen, you know what I'm talking about, where they come into the schools and ask you, are you depressed? And after that, they start peddling antidepressants and so forth to you. It is, it is almost, it's hard to avoid getting involved with drugs because the drug industry is very much interested in selling their product. In regards to abusing or having problems with prescription drugs, a lot of times it's using more than prescribed, running out of the prescription. Let's say they have a 30-day supply and after day 17, they're like, my bottle's empty, I wanna go get another one. Um, some people will doctor shop and look to get multiple prescriptions. Some will um, chop it up and use it in forms that other than prescribed, like a lot of them are taken orally. And some people, they will just chop it up or they will, you know, dilute it so they can put it in a syringe and, and to get high. Ritalin is slowed down cocaine. That's all it is. And it has many of the same attributes as far as the damage that it continues to do to people that are put on Ritalin.
let's say somebody isn't prescribed a prescription medication but they're taking it, you would not be able to know obviously if their prescription's running low or not because they're not, they're not using their own. So the behaviors that you would look for are the same behaviors that you would look for in any teenager that you're concerned about using chemicals. You know, are they isolating? Are their friends changing? Are the relationships with their family changing? Um, a lot of times our emotions will change. We'll go from being really energetic and really outgoing to being more isolative and, and angry. I I think the first time I realized that I had a problem was the day that I got arrested. Um, I basically, I like had ran away um, for a few days and I came home and I got in a big fight with my parents and like I think I was crashing on Adderall or on some other drug and um, I just like it got really out of control. I got really upset and violent and I ended up getting arrested and brought to JDC. The most recent uh, consequence I've had from prescription drug use is uh, I got hospitalized for a psychiatric evaluation. They thought I was going crazy. I was high on Oxycontin and Vicodin and I went to the Ridgedale Mall and my friend was getting beat up by a bunch of people so I switched open a knife went and got in a fight there and got arrested. And that probably wouldn't happen if I wasn't high on them. So. Sprite High School is a four-year high school for grades 9 through 12 for all students who have the desire to remain sober and are working a recovery program. Most of them have gone through treatment first. Some have not, but are already involved in working a program and committed to being sober. A sobriety High is basically like any other high school. It's just more on a recovery-based program. We start out every day and have um, a group counseling session. There's two of them in the morning. And then uh, everything else is just normal, just school. If someone happens to end up using again, we, we all just confront them and have a relapse group, try to help them through it. It's just more laid back. You know the teachers on like a first name basis rather than last name, and just you can be more open with people and there's not homework here. Well everybody here like works a program and is sober and like does what they have to do to stay, stay out of trouble so hanging out with people who aren't like constantly getting high and like messing things up for themselves like it's a lot easier to not want to go back to your old life. So will you get the release form signed? In our six hour day, every student has an hour of what's called peer counseling and they work with a recovery counselor and they talk about how it's going, where, where they're at with their families, their peers, what kind of uh, triggers are happening and then the counselor is also going to talk about where you are with your program and have what meetings have you been going to and what does your sponsor have to say. So the program is here but it continues outside the school because we know that kids leave the school every weekend, every summer and after graduation. I attended a normal high school for about a quarter and I didn't know half the people there. I didn't even know a quarter of the people there, but as soon as you walk into this school, I mean, you basically know everybody. Everybody's so, like, uh, caring. They just come up and talk to you, invite you in, invite you to go do stuff after school. <laughs> just kidding. The students are what makes it so exciting for everyone that works here because they are looking to make a change. They really are. Sometimes they'll put up a front to let you think that they're not really going to change, but they really are. So you're working with a student who wants to do this, so you get to know them on a personal level and to help them without having to say, I'm sorry, I don't have time, or I have to do hall duty, or, you know, we're available to those students. I find the typical student is extremely bright, very creative, but at the same time quite sensitive, and oftentimes comes in with a concern about the future and not a lot of hope. So we offer that opportunity to feel like it's hopeful and that they can be a part of it and they matter.